my name is uh, Mark Ellis from Stick and Rudder Studios, and uh, today I want to give you a short uh, video, uh, which is a uh, second preview of how we're uh, progressing with the uh, new user interface for creating X keypad configurations. Um, the, in the last video, we showed you some of the drag and drop and copy paste capabilities that we'd put in. Now we've actually got a good portion of the key editor working, and I wanted to walk you through um, you know, how that's working at this moment. So uh, what I have up here right now is I've got a uh, virtual device that, uh, that we've got for the Cessna 172. This is basically the 172 virtual uh, device demo that comes with X keypad. And over here on the left, uh, I've got the keypad editor. And as I come in here and I select keys, um, it'll automatically, you know, go to the key that I'm trying to edit if I just, uh, you know, pick it. Um, if I don't want to do that, I can shut this off and then, you know, I can, you know, go to the keys I want using, using um, you know, this little key selector here. So I'm going to turn that back on again and I'm going to pick the fuel selector key over here. Okay. Um, what we have uh, is the... Uh, Drop downs here for the unit. You can change the unit name if you uh, wanted to right here. Um, you can go either to shift mode or non-shift mode. Um, you can increment the key that you're looking at. Um, and then we've also got the key name up here for fuel selector. And you can change that if you, if you wanted to. You can also mark uh, whether or not this is a key for a hardware unit. And if, I mean, basically, if you remember correctly, X keypad was originally designed to work with the PI engineering hardware um, keyboards. And uh, they don't obviously have all the capabilities of a virtual device with multiple colors and multiple click spots on the keys. Uh, they, they basically got a red and a blue LED underneath each of the key, and you can program those, um, those LEDs to either be on, off, or flashing. Um, giving you either a, a blue, blue flashing, red, red flashing, or with both of them on, you get kind of a purple color underneath the key. Um, so by marking this as a hardware unit, it'll do things like remove the tabs for, um, you know, font colors and key colors and key labels and things that you really can't do on a hardware device. Um, and it just makes the, the key editor a little less cluttered. Um, if you're really trying to do a configuration for a hardware-only uh, device. Um, then what we've got here is the tabs for the various uh, capabilities on a key. You've got your logic data ref if you want to define one. Um, you've got the commands um, that are associated with uh, any key presses or key operations. Um, you've got the numeric data ref if uh, you have uh, a numeric data ref capability underneath the key. You've got your font colors and your key colors, and then ultimately we'll have the key label, um, you know, where you can define the, the, what you want the key label to be on a line-by-line -line basis and even line segments and, and um, you know, that type of thing. So let's take a look at this one here. Um, on this fuel selector uh, key, we actually have an underlying logic data ref, which is the... Uh, fuel tank selector, and if you look up here, it's showing you what the current value is. As I click this, you'll see that it goes from, you know, three is uh, is right, four is both, one is left, and that's basically what it is. It's either one, you know, three or four. There's no value for two, and there's no, you know, there's nothing for zero. Okay. Um, now, say for instance, I wanted to change that. You've got a set of finders here um, that you can find either commands or data refs for. So, I don't know, let's say I wanted to find something else about the tank. I could just come in here and do a, uh, put a filter in here, and we'll get to see all the data refs with the name tank in them and what their current values is, okay? Uh, as an example, if I came up here and I did uh, fuel underbar tank, Um, I'll actually see, you know, my particular data ref, and as I change this, okay, you'll see where it's changing. You know, you can see that these are these are the various data refs underneath here, okay. Um, and just so that you know, this integration here with this list, it's now integrated with the newer version, or the latest version of the data ref tool. 
And the data ref tool's got some just amazing technology for going out and finding all of the data refs, okay, in various aircraft and in other plugins. Um, it's actually quite sophisticated. And rather than me trying to replicate all that, um, I got uh, Lee Baker, who's the author of the data ref tool. He allowed us to do an integration to it where X keypad can actually go out to the data ref tool and say, give me all of the data refs and commands that you know about. Um, and then, you know, basically build that that filtering right in here. Um, in the past, you used to have to bring up the data ref tool uh, separately from X keypad, but we've tried to integrate it here to make it a little bit easier, you know, to do. So as an example here, if I wanted to, um, you know, maybe grab one of these other data refs, I could do a copy here, you know, and I could paste it, you know, back up, you know, over here. So let me just make sure I know. We got a fuel fuel tank selector. So if I paste it. We're now picking up a different, you know, data ref. And uh, in my case, I think this is the one we want. Paste that back here just to make sure it's still working. Yep. Right. And we see how that goes. So, um, and you could do the same thing for commands, which we'll use in just a minute here, okay? And you could shut the finders off. Um, so to give you an example of another one, okay, where we've got... Uh, you know, potentially multiple commands. If we go over to avionics power, actually, let's just uh, stop for a minute and let's go back over to, yeah, and you've got the same thing for a numeric data ref. Um, let's see, what do we have here that's got a numeric data ref? I think like the comm switches have got one, right? Uh, you know, here, same concept. You can pick the numeric data ref. You can pick if it's going to be an increment. Um, in this case, in the comm one, we just enter in a value and hit that key, but if you've got something that's got like an increment mode underneath it, um, you know, where as you click the keys, you want that data ref to make increment up and down, you can pick, you know, the, you know, what type of, uh, you know, mode you've got on it. And the same concept here is you can, you know, search for your data refs, copy them and paste them in, you know, if you, if you need to do that. Okay, so that's the data refs. Now let's come back over here to commands. And let's take a look at this fuel left, right, uh, you know, command. Uh, so you can see that you can put a condition in for the command. In, in my case, I'm saying that uh, when I right click on that key, then um, I'm going to want to do one thing if it's a right click and another thing if it's basically a left click. And as you can see, as I click these, the comparison, the logic test is going to show you what's really going on. So if I left click, since a left click's not a right click, it ends up being false. If I right click, that ends up being true. And then you have a choice of, you know, which commands do you want to have operate under that particular condition. And the tab here shows me, okay, um, you know, which one's going to be active at any given point in time. Okay? And then under the tab, uh, you get to pick what command you want operated on, right? So... In the case where I don't do a, uh, a left click, um, then what I really want to, or for, basically if I'm doing a right click, uh, then what's going to happen is, is that the false command is going to be active and I'm going to do a fuel selector up. If it's the other way around, you know, where I do the opposite click, then I want the fuel selector to go, um, you know, to go down or up. Okay? Um, and again, you can, you know, pick the commands that you want to look for to do this, and you could paste them in there. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how the commands work. Now let's take a look at the font colors. Now over here, we have multiple colors on this key. As I, as I go right, I want it to be yellow. If it's both, I want it to be green. And if it's left, I want it to be yellow. So here I can actually do, <clears throat> you know, multiple logic tests. So I've got the uh, data ref value here. And in this case, I've got a logic test that says, if it's not equal to four, then I want the key to be yellow. And then over here, it says, if it is equal to four, I want it to be true. And you can see what happens is, as the logic test, okay, uh, evaluates, it'll give you either a red false or a green true so that you can see, you know, what particular condition things are in, okay? Now, let's say as an example, I would like to have this key be a different color uh, when it's here. I can bring up a color editor, 
and I can pick whatever color I want by moving these little dots and things around. I could also show the existing palette. This palette shows all the keys that are currently being used um, you know, within the, within the keypad. So let's say, for example, maybe when it's on both, um, I want it to be this light blue. I could just come over here and drag this and put it there, and now you could see that it goes back to the other color. Maybe I want to put it back to yellow, right? Or I can actually come up here and just pick a completely different color. I don't know. Maybe we want something that's kind of a purplish chartreuse looking thing. And you can see now the key is in that color. And if I refresh the palette, that new color, you know, comes up. What I'm going to do is come back over here. I'm going to put it back to yellow. Actually, I wanted it to be green. I'm kind of messed up here. Uh, here we go. I got it back to where I want it. Okay. So that gives you an idea of how you can do the various colors. And if I wanted this logic reversed, if you remember correctly, the way the logic texts work is they go from top to bottom, and it's a logic lore. So the first one that evaluates to true, it'll stop looking. Um, but if I don't like the order, I can just drag and drop it like this and move them around, you know, to whatever order I want. Okay, I could even do something like, uh, in this particular example, let's go back over to the green. Let's say I want that rather than being a solid green, I would like it to flash. I can come up here and I could say that's a dual color. And then I could say maybe I want it to flash between, right now it's flashing between green and black. Maybe I want it to flash between green and blue. Right? Um, and, or I can remove the dual color and bring it back to a, to a solid color. Uh, so I think you get kind of a sense of how this works. You know, it's pretty easy user interface to rearrange the colors. Um, you know, and, and uh, do things of that nature. Now, another thing we can do is I can actually do a mass change of colors. Uh, so as an example, if I, rather than just dragging this key, let's say, for instance, I click on it. What that's going to do is it's going to come up and show you, if I hover over the top of it, you'll see that this is used, this color is used for no fonts, but it's actually used for five keys. And if I come down here and expand this, it's going to show me all the keys, okay, that's being used for. It's on ADF1, COM1, COM2, NAV1, NAV2, um, and it's the primary key color for that thing. Now, let's say as an example, I would like to change that. And that's basically all of these guys here, these keys. So suppose I don't like them being that light blue. I want them to be, you know, a different color. So we can come over and we could drag... Uh, I don't know, let's see, maybe we want it to be this, this chartreuse. I can bring that over here and make that the two color, and then I have to check off the ones that I want changed. And now that, and when I click this, all of these, okay, should change to that purplish color. And that actually was the color when they're selected, see? I believe this lighter blue is when they're um, not turned on, right? So if I wanted to change those, maybe I want to change them, I don't know, make it red. Now they all go to that. So you have some mass change capabilities uh, for being able to change multiple colors if you, uh, if you want to do that, okay? So let's take a look at how you define a new key. All you do is come over here to, you know, I've got this new view here that's got nothing in it. I click on a key. Maybe I put this in here being a pilot view. I could come over here to the key colors. I'll just add a color. And now I get to pick, uh, you know, what 
uh, particular color I would like to have for this. Now, on this on this particular unit, we've only got these primary colors right here, so uh, I'm going to actually have to come in here and pick a color. Because we don't on the palette, we don't show you the colors across all the units because it can get pretty confusing. Right, so I've got that. I could even make it a dual color if I want, like I said before. And we just edit that color to what we want it to be. Maybe we want it to flash between the green and the blue. And that's pretty ugly, but it's working. Okay. And that could come over here to, say, the commands. And I can just pick a command that I want to do. Let's come in here and look for views. So here's something like, you know, put me back to the 3D cockpit view. I can copy that and uh, just come up here and uh, add a command, do a paste. So now when I click that key, it's going to always bring me back to the 3D cockpit view if I was on something else. You know, I can also make a new key here. Maybe I call this a chase. Maybe I'll look for the command for uh, chase. There it is. Copy that paste it in, right? And now I've got these two buttons here where if I go back and forth like this, it should bring me between the various, um, let me actually just bring this over here real quick so that you can kind of see that. You see how that works. Okay. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of what where we're going with this and uh, <clears throat> the types of things that we're doing. By the way, you can also do things on the commands to do the show last active. And as I click here, you'll see that the command that was last active will come up. So, you know, what you can do with this is you can go into the 3D cockpit and start clicking on uh, various switches. Let me see if I can actually do that. If I bring this over here, go back to the pilot view. go to the lights and I think as I click this you can see over here that what it's um, showing you as the last command is the fuel pumps if I were to do the beacons lights you could see over here that um, the last command activated so this is really easy for you to go in and just go into your 3d cockpit and start you know, poking at the various uh, operations within the 3D cockpit. And hopefully if there's commands behind those, it'll actually come up and show you which command is being operated so that you can use it. Let's see, is there anything else I want to show you? Um, also, these units up here, if I want to move them around, I can come up here and I go to Edit Units, and I can drag and drop them to reorder them, you know, as to how I want them. <clears throat> okay? And if I want to get rid of a unit, I can just come in here and do a clear, and that would, you know, erase the unit. So I think you get a sense of where we're uh, going with this. Um, the next things I've got to work on is I've got to get the key labels uh, working, um, and then also these primary uh, LEDs, which would be the red, the red and blue LEDs that are underneath for a, a, a hardware unit so that you can program what you want them to be if you've got just a PI engineering uh, keyboard and you're not using a virtual device. Uh, and once we get that done, I think we'll be ready to roll this out uh, for the beta testers and have them uh, give it a try. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, watching and I uh, hope you like the direction we're going with this.